Yeah. Uh, Steve, Sarah, Washington Council. Of course, Mr. Button, I just checked on the internet. The uh, Washington Council book session is March 16th, and the town meeting is on first. Do you know which meeting it's going to be on? I don't. I don't. Again, I'm not spokesman for CBS here tonight, but they, the state sent me again. Ann Clark, Chester Township. Um, I just want to make a confession about fairness. Um, I've only been here five years in Chester, uh, resident of Chester Township and only been paying property taxes five years. And um, I pay, uh, you know, I, I mean, it's public information, so I pay around $15,000 a year. I don't think there's anything fair about that to the other residents because my son goes to Menden High School. And so by uh, having just one child going to our schools, it's not fair to the other taxpayers because they're sharing the burden for my child to go to school. So when I saw a letter in the Observer Tribune from a family with three children complaining about their property taxes, which I can, is public information, I can look it up. And they complained about similar property taxes for three kids. I thought that was even less fair. So I sent a letter to Mayor Cogger um, proposing that because of this, I don't think, you know, if we really want to be fair, you shouldn't pay for anybody else's children. Just pay for your own. So why don't we have a per house tax per student based on your how many come from your house? Because that's the ultimate fairness. And then we don't have public schools. But if that doesn't work, my other proposal would be that we have the Opportunity Scholarship Act for our communities. Because that way we'll provide $8,000 for elementary school or $11,000 for high school. And you can send your kids to the schools that accept them. Just like the kids in Newark or Patterson or Orange. So if that's what, if you want to be fair, I'm not fair now. And I just want to confess that. And I want to make sure we know what fair is. Thank you. Uh, John Morell, Mendenboro. Um, I, I, I was one. I, I was the person who did the uh, presentation in Mendenboro. As a matter of fact, you were there. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Johnson, Jackie Schramm was there as well. Mr. Button was there. Um, I, I, I guess my question is: we, we, we've danced around this issue. Will, will, will the board vote up or down at the next meeting after the Chester Township uh, presentation, after the Washington Township presentation? Will the board vote up and down, up or down on putting this on the uh, April 27th um, about? Uh, I can answer that. Robert's Rules of Orders states that the motion which was tabled has to be untabled. Once it's untabled, the motion will be made for whatever it has evolved into after discussion, and it will be voted upon. Could that get retabled? Yes, it could. Will it? Time will tell. But that's that's the legislative process, as far as I understand. Anybody got any corrections on that? No, I, I would just add that I don't know how. It, it, obviously, we tabled the motion tonight to get more information. I don't know how you can and ask. What board. What is the information that you'll be looking at, but looking for at the next meeting? We need to understand what the timelines are. We need to understand what approvals are necessary from the Executive County Superintendent and the State Department of Education. Uh, what legal review is necessary. What the board's authority in doing this is. If this would be a binding or a non-binding referendum. We need to understand uh, data. What are the student enrollment trends? What are the cost per student trends? What happens to equalization aid? If equalization aid is driven more by by uh, property wealth and town income, that means that equalization aid is probably coming more from one town than another. Does it accrue to that town? Does, does that town get a credit for that aid? Or does it accrue equally across all, all of the towns? We don't know any of those things. We, what happens to students who, who currently attend private school? Are they counted in any formula? We don't know that. We need to, to understand what all the options are, what all the voting requirements are for all the options, whether it's equalized property value, uh, per pupil, a blend, or K-12 uh, regionalization. And we need to understand what the feasibility is. 
of all of those things. And that's just off the top of my head. Okay, I, I, th that's fine. Um, my, my suggestion is that you put, you put together a list that, that, the, that, that the board attorney can have prepared for the next we meeting. Have, we have Mike Calver, who is a, an attorney, who will not cost our board any money. We don't want to take any additional dollars out of the classroom. Who will? Who is the the resident expert in the state on this issue? Will, will, will all of Department those issues be submitted to him prior to the meeting? Absolutely. Will he come prepared to answer every one of those Absolutely. questions? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, when you have all that information, you the board will vote on it. If if the board is so inclined, I can't speak on behalf. Uh, well, I'm, I'm asking. I'm, I'm asking that, that on, on your behalf. behalf. I can't make any guarantees on behalf of the board. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, in the back. Jeff Emery, Washington Township. Good evening. Uh, I've had the pleasure of being at the three presentations of CBS to date. I'll be at the one tomorrow. Uh, John, I liked your presentation uh, in Mendenboro. I thought it was a fair and very straightforward presentation. But, you know, there's a message that I'm getting as a casual observer and a Washington Township resident from these presentations. Number one, Mendham High School's going downhill. Mendham High School is in decline. That's a, that's a theme that was very strong in Mendham Township's presentation. It was mentioned in the Chester's. I don't think that's right. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's a fair assessment. It's going downhill because the majority of the members are from Washington Township who don't have the same, and I'm almost quoting this verbatim, the same expectation as the people of the Chester's and Mendham, talking about the well-being and, and, and you know future uh, future well-being of, of their children. The other thing I'm hearing is really it's just a demonization of Washington Township. I haven't heard any facts. I haven't heard numbers. I haven't seen handouts. I haven't ha heard discussions of what all the regional districts do. Uh, what other regional districts are unhappy with the funding formula? What regional districts have a combination of uh, of per pupil and uh, and property tax as their formulated budget? Uh, all I'm really hearing is negative Washington Township messages. And the Manager, point is, back. if you're, no, no, I'd like to finish. If you're going to make these presentations, you have to do more. You have to have other justification other than that Washington Township is screwing things up. And that's the flavor I'm getting from these. And I'm hoping tomorrow night, what, what else have I heard? I think I heard that Washington Township representatives control the tax amount that the people of the Chester's amendments pay. That's not true. That's not true. That's a ridiculous thing to say. So if you want to make presentations, if you want to talk about fairness, that's perfectly fine. But put the facts out there. Don't go out there and say, well, you know, the whole problem is Washington Township. If you want to make a claim that you're unhappy with the funding formula, that you feel you pay too much, make the claim. But don't point the finger at Washington Township. If you want to change the funding formula with your business partner, sit down with them, talk to them about it, but don't stab them in the back. Thank you. Um, yes, I know Mr. Emery was there. Um, and, and I'm sure that he would be happy to say that, uh, that the discussion was totally about the funding formula at Mendenborough. And you can have other discussions uh, about other places. <coughs> I did it, I know. It was about the funding formula. That's what we're asking the board to do. Uh, and that's what we asked the Mendenborough Council to do, and that's what they asked you to do. Okay. Thank you. And, yes. Uh, Carol Brady Mendenboro, I was also at the meeting, and I just want to echo Mr. Scobletti's point. Um, whatever anyone does, we both of the budget. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thanks so much, Ernie, from North Valley. At the risk of taking too much time here. I, in all the letters that I've seen of the Observer Tribune the last couple of weeks, um, I liked the letter from a woman, I know her first name is Beth, asking all kinds of questions about this. She's a Chester resident, I believe. So, you know, it's, she obviously had questions versus, you know, even if she was from uptown, who might benefit by a, a new funding formula. But the letters that I saw to the editor last week seemed very, well, they were interesting to me because the numbers were all different. So what I'm seeing in these letters are people from Chester, people uh, behind the CBS group who want to change the funding formula but really don't have the right numbers to begin with. One is saying that, you know, one 
like page 21, verses 10, the other thing, 19, verses 12. And so I'm not sure we have the right numbers out there to begin with. So my question to either Doug or Kristen, whoever can answer this, um, today, currently, we base it on property value. But it's not as simple as that, I know. So how, give me a, just a, if you can, a quick explanation of how, right now, we fund the district. Because I'd like to know, I, I don't know, I just wonder if people heard it, whether they think it was fair or not. Yeah, some people will think it's fair, some people won't, I well, it, our, our current funding uh, formula is based 100% on property values. Okay, so what does that mean, though? Because it's not just as simple as, you know, I mean, all right, so I, my house is worth $650,000. How does that compare to somebody in Minnesota who has a $650,000 house? Okay, you're paying taxes? So we're paying. That's what I mean. I don't know if, it, if everyone knows. Okay, I'm not sure. Okay. You know what? When, when, we, when we do these, and uh, because I'm not going to answer that question with numbers okay. uh, at, at this point in time, because I'm a numbers guy and I got to see the real numbers. I understand. Uh, <laughs> in our budget presentation, we address that. You know, we take a $500,000 home in each one of the communities, we apply the tax rate from each one of those communities, and we say, this is what your household will contribute based on $500,000 of value to the regional district. That's a part of our presentation, and we will have that for you shortly. I, I would also say, as far as the, the funding, there's a very um, good explanation of how our funding is calculated on the regional website. There's a tab on the left that, that uh, mentions I can't remember what it's called, but there, there is a tab on the board side that then describes, takes you a page that describes how the tax is calculated. It's based on a countywide equalization formula. What does equalization mean? <laughs> ask the county <laughs> or ask the state. I know, but but what, it means is, what it means is that for 10 years, Chester Township didn't reevaluate.